Hello and welcome back to Ice Hockey from Norway. Paul Ferguson here with Richard Beaupre. The first period of the Canada-Italy match has been completed and it's a 2-1 scoreline with the Canadians leading the Italians. And we're going to take a look now at the highlights. Borja Bo Johansson is the referee. An all Scandinavian affair out there as they pose for the cameras. The Canadians in the first period were in red playing, playing from left to right. The Italians with 13 Canadians, one Czech and one American out there had no shortage of international support. The Canadians got on the score sheet first on a power play affair and we'll take a look at that in a moment players to watch out there number nine korea and of course nedved the czech who now plays for canada wearing number 93 korea was working hard behind the net to set it up nedved is positioned on the far post the one-timer after the pass from paul korea and that's the first goal for canada and oddly enough, it goes to a Czech who now holds the Canadian passport. Power play goal. You're absolutely right, Paul. The Czech Canadian gets the Canadians on the scoreboard first. A good job by Paul Correa keeping his head up, taking a look. This guy is known for his playmaking ability. He's made comments and he's very pleased at the chance to play with Peter Nedved, who certainly can put the puck in the goal. Nedved lets this one go on a one-timer. Cleanly beating the Italian goalkeeper, 1-0 for the Canadians. 7.32, the time of the goal. And it just took a few minutes for the Italians to reply. The Canadians with several stars of the future out there, several youngsters, but uh, several not really tried and tested at this level. Some good speed from both teams and some solid hitting in particular in the first period from the Italians. They really did come out throwing their bodies around and a chance was well taken for the Italians here. The shot came in, Oberal got a piece of it and Detoni, number 10, took the open net and put the puck in it. The Italians working very hard, didn't let the goal by the Canadians bother them. They kept up their intensity. The initial shot coming from Oberal, the puck is handled by Corey Hirsch. He can't do much with it though. Alertly on top of the rebound is number 10, Lino De Toni. Eight sixteen, the time of that goal, and that leveled the score. And for quite a while, it was a seesaw battle. Then, right near the end of the period, the Canadians struck again. Keeper on number five, back at the blue line. Again, we see a power play situation with the Canadians in control. A lot of throwing the puck around, and eventually the shot came from number five, Marenka. And he hit the back of the net. One-timer. And that's all they needed, and that's the way the period ended. Not a very nice one for the goaltender. The puck appeared to go off Zerillo's skate on its way into the net. Brad Waranka doesn't matter, doesn't mind it very much. He's got the goal to put the Canadians back out in front very late in the first period. Korea moving the puck around. Waranka letting the shot go. It's deflected. The Italians are beaten for the second time. Two to one. That's the way it ends after 20 minutes of play. Waranka getting it away from the blue line quickly. Tough break there, as you said, Richard, for the Italian goaltender. And we're going to be joining the action in just a moment with the second period live from Jovic. And the Italians will go up against the Canadians for 40 minutes of hockey. So that's the way it ended after 20 minutes of play. Still a lot of time to go. And a close one right now. Can the Italians stay with the Canadians? We're going to take a short break right now. Join us when we come back live for the second and third periods. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're back live now as the Canadians step onto the ice. 
And we get set for the second period. The Italians did not look out of place in the first period. We had a chance to see it here. And as I said, they did not look out of place against the Canadians. Again, the Canadians have come over with a, a mixture of college kids and international players and uh, one or two NHL players and it seems to be a nice mixture that Tom Rennie has put together. Brian Leffley, the Italian coach, has worked hard with his boys. One or two new names in there. The Italians seem to be coming up with those passports. A lot faster than even the British can do it. I know. Every time you look around, the Italians have a new name out there, and he has a, a Canadian accent or American accent, and even a Czech accent. Should, I hate to say it, Paul, but I should think you'd get fed up with talking about passports and work papers, etc. But you keep going on and on, and your points are very valid. Every team that steps on the ice, where is their blood? Actually, I know everybody's come from someplace, but the Italians, in particular, are a team that. Well, who's Italian on the side? That's what you've really got to wonder. The name seemed to change, and I or an O is added to it, and there you go. And here we are. You're an American with a British passport, and I'm a Canadian with a British passport. I'm not complaining, and you seem to know what you're talking about, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> After the first period of play, shots on goal, 12 apiece. The Italian game style is just like the Canadians. As we've said before, a lot of Canadians on the Italian team. So it hasn't been made easy for Canada, who are favorites coming into this game. The Italians know how to play them. It was a pretty even period. Guccelli flips that over the far side. The Canadians playing from right to left. Orlando taken out of the play in front of the goal. Paul Correa drops it back. And as I said, he's the one to watch. The number one draft pick for Anaheim. The guy's only five foot nine, perhaps a little gamble to put him into the NHL, but there have been a lot of small players go forward and really prove themselves. Delfino went down and made a great save right in front. A chance now for the Italians as they break early on in the first period. Rink-wide pass trying to set up Top of Teague, and Top of Teague unable to control that bouncing puck. Good action in the corner as Top of Teague follows through on the check. Pichelli goes after his man. Nedbed broke down the right side. The puck didn't come his way. Going after in a hurry is Astley. The Canadians going back on the D now with Schlegel. Brad Schlegel, who's been around for the Canadian national team, gives that up to Contos. Contos to Nedbed. Offside is the call. Korea, Nedbez, Nedbed, and Contos is the big line for the Canadians so far. And this is the one they're counting on for firepower. Brad Schlegel, a good stay-home defenseman, has been with the national team for quite a while, doing his job, getting the puck out, leaving it to the likes of Paul Correa and Nedved to make it happen in the Italian zone. Good look at Lucio Topatig, a good aggressive forward who just doesn't stop working. He's a guy to watch for the Italians. He seems to improve with age too, Topatig. He gained some maturity over the months. Tapped away there by De Tony, the goal scorer in the first period for the Italians. De Tony gets it back, and the Canadians keep it in. Tap right in front of the shot. Score! Wally Schreiber, who knows all about European hockey, makes it three for the Canadians. Schreiber, who's played hockey in Germany, makes the most of this shot in the slot, gets it away quickly. Canadians controlling the puck at the blue line. Schreiber stops it, lets it go. Goaltender looks screened on the play to me. Good patience exhibited at the blue line by Mayer. Pass going through to Schreiber. Schreiber delivering the third goal for Canada. One twenty-four, the time of the goal here in the second period as the Canadians pounce early and face off now with Savage and this is another guy to watch if you want to see some physical stuff racing in quickly is Dwayne Norris Norris is beaten to it by Delfino interesting point about Savage he took two years off his ice hockey to concentrate on his golfing career he had a one handicap at 16 so all the hockey boys are out there watching that like to play golf in the summer Listen to that one and cry. We know how we like to hack around the golf course. This guy isn't a hacker. He's a golfer for real. Got back to his hockey talents and was a Montreal draft pick in 91. He's still only 22 years old and has probably got a nice NHL contract waiting for him after the Olympic Games. 
and after that he can spend some time in Florida playing golf. Coming up quickly is Di Gaetano. Gaetano tops it up, and Pezliuzzi spun out of the play. Oberau bangs it off the boards, and the Canadians go deep with Mayer. Mayer with that half visor gives it to Savage. Savage drops it off, a rink-wide pass. Ends up in neutralized territory, and Di Gaetano brought it forward. Hirsch had to reach for that one as it bounced off the plexi. From a sharp angle, Hirsch again comes up with a save. And we have a whistle on the play as things start to get physical in the Canadian zone. Swedish referee Johansson asserting himself on the play, issuing the cross-checking call. Action tough around the front of the Canadian goal. Going for the rebound is Italian number 12, Mansi. The cross-check is delivered by the Canadian number 14, Brian Savage. He goes directly to the penalty box, sporting a nice black eye underneath the visor. It's unusual to see players at this level playing the full visor, and I know that players who don't use a face mask really get annoyed with guys like that because they usually go in with the high sticks because they know nothing can hurt their faces. You know all about that, don't you? Well, by the time face mask came out, it was too late for some of us. <laughs> a face that could launch a thousand ships or has launched a thousand ships. It's tough swinging by your feet as that goes back. And the Canadians now go on the defense as the Italians set it up in the Canadian zone. A chance for the Italians to bring themselves back into the game, but they'll have to bring it back into the zone before they do that. The long clearance goes all the way down behind Delfino, and the Italians start it up. Breaking through on the wing is uh, Gaetano. Top of Teague is out there working with him. All the way back, and that trickles over the blue. Duccelli unable to control it. Top of Teague is there to help out. And that shot out to the blue line, or the red line, rather. Clearance by Duccelli, and the Italians elect to fire it in. First is there, going back quickly. Warenka. Warenka picks it up off the boards. A nice little clearance, and the Canadians start to work out. Despite the fact that they have a man down, Warenka goes in the corner. Top of Teague stays with him. The shadow also came from Coachelli. Top of Teague feeds it up. Orlando into the corner. Looking for the give and go. That bounces off a skate. And Orlando goes into the corner. Gates Orlando puts on the brakes. Sets it up. Schreiber goes after him all the way back. DeAngelis takes the shot. First was down, but it didn't go the distance. That comes all the way back to the point again. DeAngelis is there. Feeds it in. Gets the return pass. Another shot. And this time Hirsch bangs it off the plexi. Pichelli, DeAngelis, and Hirsch is there, right in front, a loose puck, and Top of Teague moved in quickly with Zerillo, and they couldn't put it away. 20 seconds now on the power play, and a break for the Canadians. Astley trying to skate it away, and that didn't work, and the Italians with three men over the blue, the shot. And that ricochets off the plexi, Fazliuzzi let the rocket go. Camazola to the far side. And the Italians looking for another change out there as they keep it going. Stewart brings it up. A chance for the Italians. Iovio let the shot go. And that just misses the far post. And the Canadians back at full strength now. Korea dispossesses Iovio in the corner. Nedbed breaks on the far side. Nedbed picks up the pass and takes a heavy hit. And a chance now for Astley as he's thrown off the puck. Insam got it away for the Italians, and that goes all the way down the ice. Sison will be the call. But the Italians are looking good out there despite the 3 1 scoreline. They're throwing the puck around with confidence. They're hitting. Good action for both teams. They're, both, they're all working hard, everybody that comes out onto the ice. The passes are starting to be put together by both sides, and we're seeing some good action coming toward the goaltenders. Yobio with a nice little side step there, a shot going just wide of the net. On the power play, Zerillo and Orlando doing a lot of good work with uh, Top of Teague. They almost made one pay for themselves. Good power play by the Italians. Unlucky not to come up with a goal. Face off now deep in the Italian zone. 4.30 gone in the second period. 3-1 to one the score. The Canadians leading this one. You're live on Eurosport. We missed the first period, but we did show you the highlights. Mansi. Mansi being shadowed by 25, Wa. Norris goes in to work along with Wa, the 
clearance out into neutralized territory, and the Italians bring it over in numbers, but they stop just inside the blue line, and back come the Canadians. Wow. Trying to get it to the far side, and the Italians getting back to break it up. And it's usually about halfway through the third period when the Italians start to run out of steam. They can stay with most teams in the first two periods. Oh, a big hit there. Mayer. Possibly the stick being up before the hit, but the hit itself was a nice one. Derek Meyer showing his strength and really laying the body check on the Italian forward. The stick is up a little high. The Italian doing a good job to fight it off. That's what the call is going to be all about. Mansi just kind of rode the tide out and ended up pasted into the end boards. The stick is up there. Mansi gets his head taken off. Does the noble thing by staying with it and ends up getting belted again, going into the boards very hard. Showing his fitness, though, bouncing right back up for more. He's probably thinking right now, did I really need that? It's only day one for them. Italian power play coming up now as Brian Lefley paces behind that Italian bench. Comes all the way back to number seven, Stewart. Stewart, one of the oldest players in the competition at 36. Lorenka feeds it along and that trickles over the blue line. The Italians will have to come out and start it again. Stewart drops it back. And the Italians now. Pavlou. A big poke at that, and the Canadians somehow come up with the puck and clear it out of the zone. Stewart again feeds it to the far side. Some good forechecking coming from Joseph. Stewart. Stewart puts it on to an open wing. Not a great pass from him, and Bisliuzzi was well and truly ahead of the puck. Mansi pushed it to the far side. Mansi takes up his position in front of the nets, and the Canadians not letting the Italians get set out there. A long shot wide of the target. And some good stuff as Fizliuzzi moved in quickly. Stewart moves over, can't get the shot away. Schlegel trying to do some work out there with Urenka. A big punch from number five, Brad Urenka. Fizliuzzi on the receiving end of that behind the net. Schlegel tips it along the plexi, but it still doesn't go out. Schlegel at the second attempt and a big grab there by Mansi. Mansi dumps his man down. The Italians continue to play on. Pavlou, the Czech Italian, got it back. Fizliuzzi stops at the high slot area. Chance to get the shot away. That comes, and Hirsch makes the save, and it's cleared down the ice. Once again, good action from the Italians with the power play. They're moving the puck around nicely. They're working hard. A long shot, but not a bad quality shot from there. But the Canadian goaltender, Hirsch, kicking the rebound out, and the Canadians able to clear. Top of Teague now steps on the ice and comes forward. Three seconds on the power play. Top of Teague pushes it in there. And that comes all the way around to number 22. Greg Parks doesn't go out of the zone. Pacelli pumping it in. And eventually the Canadians get it out of the zone, but the Italians grab it right back. Both teams here at full strength coming back on the attack. Wow. Roth trying to bring it from beside the net. Eventually goes right in front. And the Canadians with Parks, Astley, Roth dancing right along the blue line now. A loose puck on the side of the net. They score! A wicked bounce off the backboards. Lushko was there to pounce. We keep saying it. The puck boards are very lively in both ranks. Lushko alertly jumping on it. The big shot coming from number 24, Mark Astley, goes off the back boards before Delfino can recover. Lushko is right on top of the rebound and has an open netter. These boards at the back, Richard, really have a mind of their own, don't they? Very difficult for the goaltender going one way. All of a sudden, the puck comes out the other way. Just not quick enough is Delfino. Four to one the score now, 7.43 gone in the second period, and they'll do that face off again. And the Canadians extending their lead despite some very serious stuff from the Italians. 
Nedved goes into center. Iovio tries to take it off, and then the Italians now moving forward. Pushed all the way into the Canadian zone. Terrian picks it up in the circle, fires it up to the blue line. Korea passes it forward. Nedved now comes up over the line, a backhander. Delfino watches that go in the corner. Iovio is there, and we have an interference penalty called. Italians down by three goals at this point. Can't afford penalties. Vignoli makes his way to the box. The Oregon player does his thing. The Canadians go back to the power play. Later on this evening, the French side take on the USA and that will complete day two of this competition every team in the competition will have played groups A and B with six teams each and they're all trying to get in that final four of each group to fight it out in the knockout round for the medals they cross over to the top of A will play the bottom of B and so on and they'll go for gold the final game on the 27th of February will be shown along with just about every other game here on Eurosport. Most of the games will be live whenever possible. And the Canadians with Korea moving in behind the goal. Astley calling for it back at the high slot. Astley moving in. Korea's got it now right in front of the net. And Delfino went down. Astley pumped it back into the corner. And Nedved took a hit, but not before he got it to Korea. The tip is there, and again, Delfino goes down, but doesn't have to make the save. Astley circles at the blue line, pushes that in the corner. Nedved again working with Korea. These two seem to have struck up a nice relationship. Astley let the shot go, and that just ran out of steam. Thrown to the far side, and the Canadians now settle down and put together a good power play. Johnson ricocheting off the flexi. Astley wants it back at the blue, moves along into center ice territory, throws it over to the far side. The Canadians with Contos calling for it. Korea. Korea slows it down, looking for an opening. This guy has got great vision out there as Contos gets it back to him. Another one-timer looking for Nedved. And the Canadians throwing it around nicely with 30 seconds now remaining on the power play. What a pass from Korea. Feathered that one through nicely. The Canadians nearly pulled off another one-timer. Mancy gets that out of the zone as the Canadians go for a change. The Italians also looking to get fresh legs out there. Varenka starts it up for Canada. This guy can motor. Brad Varenka hits the blue, taps it into the corner. DeAngelis is there for the Italians, but he can't get it out of the zone. Varenka circles and elects just to tip it in. Coming back into the action, the Italians back at full strength. From the side of the net, the Canadians still apply the pressure, a change of personnel out there. Parks moves into position beside the goal. Parks is right there, just couldn't get the tip. Wah, skating well with Parks as the young Canadians throw the puck around. Athlete has been out there for a long time, back of the blue, and this could break nicely for the Italians. Pavlou, Pavlou stick handling down the ice, leaves it right on the blue. And Mancy just peppers that into the far corner. Parks got it up to 25. Wa Schreiber gets back to help out. Schreiber drops it to the top of the circle, and the Canadians changing on the fly and throwing the puck around like they mean it out there. That goes all the way down the ice. Both teams will have the chance to complete line changes. The crowd gets to do their thing in between face-offs. Good action from the Canadians, starting to really pick it up in the Italian zone and putting a lot of pressure on the Italian defensemen. It's one of the thin areas for the Italians. Overall, Cercelli, Bill Stewart. They're old veterans back there, and they aren't going to want to have to keep going back to chase the puck all night. Well, I said that the Italians usually run out of steam in the third period. It looks right now that they've run out of steam in the second period. The Canadians leading 4-1. to one. Uh, throwing the puck together, the Canadians going into this, playing 50 to 60 games all over the world. One or two late additions that we'll tell you about later, but uh, the Canadians 
have had a lot of time to play together. The shot coming in. Savage got a piece of that. Another shot just misses the far corner. Norris got the lumber on that. And the Italians at sixes and sevens as Remeser gets it out of the zone. Harlock goes deep for the Canadians and gets it up to Savage. A two-on-one situation. The Canadians with Delfino taking the shot. Norris got a piece of it. Warner came in looking for the rebound. And Canada certainly playing some good hockey against the Italians here in the second period. Young kids on the ice for Canada. Savage, Norris, you can just see them really picking up the pace. The Italians are going to find it harder as the game goes on to skate with these guys. Well, you're right when you say that the Italians have several veterans, I think is the polite word to use, but these guys cannot go three periods at this pace, that's for sure. But it's far from over as Camazola brought it in with one hand on the stick. Good defensive work from Mayer. Mayer, who played some hockey in San Diego, gets it up on the wing, and the Canadians avoid the offside with Korea going in. And that was close. Korea unable to break it down, and the Italians now, Bugnoli, brought it forward. The task pass up to Gatoni. Gatoni losing possession of the puck. Nedved moves in to Shadow. Stewart fires it to the far side. Tapati. Papatig, perhaps one too many moves from him. And the whistle blows on that one, and uh, the last man out of the zone should not try to stick handle out. Hooking is the call, and that's why the whistle blew, but uh, we've seen already a couple of times where the last man out of the zone has tried to carry it out, and Papatig here could have got into trouble. The coaching staff have got to be happy with what they see from the Canadians right now. Hard work all over the ice. Peter Nedved a little bit too aggressive on the forecheck, hooking his man up in an attempt to take the puck off him. The idea was right, but the hook got in there, and the referee, Johansson, was right on top of the play. Kelly throws that into the center of the ice, and number 17, Orlando, brings it down on the right wing. Orlando pumps it to the corner. And the Canadians now start to bring it out. Three Canadians hitting the red line. A three-on-two situation. A chance for Canada. Delfino makes a save on Waugh. And the Canadians not worried about Nedved being in the penalty box. They're going forward. They certainly are. Three guys. You could hear the whole Canadian bench yelling three like a three-on-two situation that they had. Intercepted in front, but the puck is left there, and Top of Teague just couldn't get any lumber on it. Lubson went flying into the boards at the far end. The score! Power play goal! Well, is this one going to count? Referee Johansson waving his arms like he's a bird about to take off for a flight, saying no goal. He is going to rule that the goalie was interfered with. Interference is going to be the call. The Italians are not happy at all. Oberau is right in Johansson's face, having words with him. Lovson took a big hit in the corner. As the play's building up, Tapatee drives Lovson into the boards. Tapatee continues on with the puck, pushes it back to the point. D'Angelis lets it rip. There's commotion in front of the goal. An Italian is involved. Johansson is only human. In his eyes, Gates Orlando created a little bit too much confusion around the front of the net for his liking. As Corey Hirsch went down, Orlando is called for interference on the play. Corey Hirsch taken down from behind. The interference call at 13-37 rather nullifies the goal. 4-1 is still the scoreline. And the Italians not happy about that. Faceoff comes out of the zone and the Canadians dump it all the way into Italian territory. A loose puck scoots around behind the Italian net and Mancy takes a swipe at it. Big hit coming in there from Parks and the Canadians finishing off their checks nicely. This is old-fashioned hockey as the Canadians start to throw their bodies around out there. Parks picks it up deep, drops it back. Warenka, Warenka slams on the brakes and throws a nice pass up on the wing and Astley delivers it up onto the left wing. A chance Schreiber drops it back and number 24, Astley got a piece of it. Delfino came out and pounced on it. With the size of this ice surface, it's a game of legs. And the Canadians have certainly got a lot more legs than the Italians do. Not to give any 
credit away from the Italians, or take credit away, that is. They are a good team. As I was saying, the Italians have a good team. There's a lot of skill and a lot of talent, some veterans out there and a couple of young guys. But the league that they play in, maybe one league game a week, and the style of play that they have to come out and face a Canadian team who are young with kids that are trying to make names for themselves and get contracts on European teams or in the NHL, they're going to find it hard. These guys have played 40 or 50 games and they're ready to go. Delfino loses his way at the top of the crease. Big shot came in from Mayer. And the pileup still in front of the goal as the Italians come out. Iovio moving quickly, moving neatly over the blue line. Iovio trying to do it all on his own. And eventually, Mayer gets back to take it off him. Some good two-way hockey from Mayer coming back on the attack via Canadians. Johnson working up with Mayer again. This guy is up and down the rink. Unless there are two guys out there with number four on their back. Pumped into the corner. The Canadians impressing here in the second period. Four to one the score. That comes all the way back. The Italians now throwing a man out on the ice. Shot from a sharp angle. Nedved is back on the ice for Canada. Orlando still in the box on the interference call. Nedved circles back and the Italians trying to get a change on the fly here as Nedved looks to give and go. Korea breaks up on that side or the far this side rather. Nedved on the far side. Ra. Korea, Warenka is back calling for it. Ned Bed goes over. Kamazola taking his man out heavily. Warenka taps it into Ned Bed, who looks for Korea. Korea will get there first. Stewart goes after him. Ned Bed has the puck. Now the Italians back at full strength. Warenka can't get the shot away. And Topatig has time on the far side after he takes a major hit to get the puck out of the zone. Top of tea. gives as good as he gets. He's a really tough guy. The Canadians continue to apply a little pressure here with Chris Contos firing that right through the crease. And Canada with the young team looking to build as they go on in this one. Contos along the boards. Korea. Korea <laughs> dancing along in that corner. And DeAngelis wasn't having any of that. Savage comes out now. Savage at the side of that. Oh, that was nice. Contos was right there on the short side. Savage did a lot of work. Korea was playing footsie in the corner, making everybody look like a fool. Little flash of Phil Esposito from Chris Contos camping out in front of the goal, letting the kids do the work. Korea and Savage hustling around. Contos is waiting, he's positioned in the slot, takes a couple strides, Savage lays the puck off the side of the net, it's back on the stick of Contos, and the 30-year-old who's played on three or four NHL teams isn't going to make a mistake from that far out. So Contos getting official credit for that one, 5-1 to one the score at 16-23 of uh, the second period and this is becoming a rout. The Canadians extending their lead and really don't look to be in trouble in this period and they haven't looked to be in trouble. They're most are taken out of the play heavily and the Canadians started out again. And I think the Canadians would like to show the rest of the teams in this competition that they mean business. Everybody looking at the Russians and the Swedes and no mention of Canada out there. There's Rarely is a mention. We have a penalty coming up. And the goaltender, Hurst, stays right there. Eventually, the puck is touched by the Italians. A little hesitant to get that one going, but the Canadians decide to remain with the status quo, and the Italians get the penalty. Ramos are going to the penalty box for Italy. Elbows coming up high. The Italians showing their frustration, finding it difficult to skate with the Canadians. Becoming more and more evident as the game goes on. The young kids are starting to put on a show. The likes of Korea on his last shift doing the Torval and Dean as he's going down on the defense. He's going to take a hit for that because nobody likes to let a kid get away with something like that. Right along the boards, they're going tough. The elbow coming up from Ramoser. Eight feet away from the officials. 
And the Canadians now with the seconds ticking down here in the period started up. Varenka followed by Schreiber pumps that over to the far side. Canada now putting on another display. They've got the man advantage. They lead by five to one. The Canadians with Astley at the high slot. Astley calling for it. Lorenka on this side. Schreiber positioned right in front of the goal. The shot. Delfino goes down and that deflects high. And we'll have another face off on the plate. Both teams having a quick look at the referee to see where the face off is going to occur. Long day at the office for Delfino. Shaking his head. He's seen a lot of rubber. I think you know as soon as you put on an Italian goalkeeper's jersey that you're going to see a lot of rubber. It kind of comes with the territory. It's like being an Austrian goaltender. I won't go any further. Face off and the Italians grab it and shoot it down the ice. The Canadians with a chance to make it six on the power play here. Astley to the far side. Looking for Johnson. Moving into the corner is Waugh. All the way back to the blue, and that was bobbled right at the blue line. Johnson having problems, giving it over to Astley, back to Johnson. Eviovio takes his man out of the play, but can't get position of the puck. And the Canadians bring it over the blue with Astley just whistling that around the boards. Canada now setting it up. Stewart stays on his man, and the Canadians hang on to the puck as they move it in the far corner. DeAngelis goes out to meet, or rather Orlando goes out to meet, but Astley has the puck, a shot right on goal. A chance as Wa goes in. Wa drops it. And Canada doing a lot of moving out there. A nice power play. Well, that wasn't the best thing they've ever done, but they certainly are getting a lot of movement, a lot of circling, a lot of changing of positions out there. Orlando forcing the Canadians there, causing that pass to be a bad one. Johnson gets it up to Nedved. Schreiber moves in behind the goal, and Canada with Astley trying to get it back to Nedved. Astley elects to go the other way, and Canada still with the power play. The shot comes in, and the Italians were always going to grab that. Two seconds on the power play, and they're back at full strength. Big shot as Hirsch went down, and that bounces all the way back to the blue. And the Italians somehow keep it in the zone. Oberau looking for... The Gaetano, Gaetano flips it up, 5-1, to one, confirmation of the scoreline. The Italians really haven't threatened the goal for a long time out there. Pablo gets it out front, that comes back to the blue line. The shot that comes in is a weak one, that deflected away, and Rolenko gets it to Nedved. Nedved hits the blue line, Korea is back, the shot comes in, they score! Well, Nedved had several options there. He looked at Korea, Contos was there too. And that's the option he went with. Delfino once again picking himself up off the ice. Peter Nedved hits the blue line, takes a look. He's got Korea cruising behind him. Elects to go to the right wing where he's got a left-hand shot in Chris Contos. He delivers the goods, his second goal of the period. The Canadians out in front by five now, six to one. 21 seconds to play in the second period. A commanding lead now by the Canadians. Well, it's always nice for a top team to, I hate to say, have an easy run, but the, they want a game that they control when they get into it. You really don't want to meet the Russians or the Swedes in the first game of this competition. And this will set them up. It'll give them a chance to get the Olympic jitters out of their system and get everyone into playing some hockey out there, get used to the big rink surface. Well, that's the buzzer that ends the second period. Six to one, the score. It was two to one after 20 minutes of hockey. The Canadians went crazy in the second period. Schreiber, the Schluko, and Contos twice. That makes it six to one. Canadians taking total control. The Italians getting themselves into penalty trouble. The Canadians making the most of it. Third and final period coming up right after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the third and final period here. This one between Canada and Italy. Delfino goes to the bench. Rossati goes between the pipes for the Italians. 17 saves for Hirsch. The Italians had 20 shots on goal or 20 shots on their goal. And so Delfino with 
20 shots on him. Let's in six and Brian Lefley, the coach, decided to try Michael Rosati. Tom Rennie must be happy with what's happening out there for Canada right now. The boys are certainly putting out for him. The work ethic is there. They're skating hard. Everybody that he's throwing on the ice is doing the job. They've outshot the Italians 26-18. You've got to feel sorry for Delfino. That's the noble thing to do. It shows respect for the guy. It's going to be a long Olympic Games. Get the other guy in there and give him some action. Mayer tapped that up to the blue line, and the Canadians working it up now. Hit the red. That's thrown all the way in. Rosati will look to get an early touch. Nedved. Korea. Korea spun around off the play, and the Italians come out hitting here in the uh, third period. They got to do something in a hurry. I don't think they're going to claw back this five-goal deficit, but they could make it a little more respectable. And the Canadians will want to continue to work on their passing and their game plan out there for the rest of the tournament. They know it's a long way to go. They know eventually they're going to meet up with the big boys, and they got to be ready for it. Hirsch throws that over to the far side, but it only goes back to the blue line, and the Canadians stuck in their own zone for a minute here. Some grabbing by Terrian. Terrian who hails from Ottawa, will sit for a couple of minutes. The referee's arm is in the air, whistle blows. And nothing complicated about that. Whenever you lose your stick and put the clutch on somebody, you're going to get the call most of the time. Referee right behind the play along the goal line, watches it closely. Terrion loses his stick, puts the grab on. The referee's in the back of the picture, but he doesn't like the way the Italian's being manhandled. 54 seconds, the time of the holding penalty to Terrian. And so the Italians go on the attack now with the man advantage. Camazola moves right up into the face-off circle. And the Canadians are being asked to do it again. Marinka has a lot of time and bounces that off the boards. And one or two of his teammates were just wondering where he was going to shoot that. Thrown over to the far side. Stewart taps it off the boards out to Wawrinka. And the Italians not playing clever hockey out there. You've got to be impressed with this guy, Brad Wawrinka. He's playing some good hockey. Camazola squeezed out of the play. The big Canadian defenseman seems to be all over the ice. He came up with a second goal for the Canadians. It was a power play effort early in the first period. Loves him. Fires out around the boards, and both teams are going for a change out there. Canadians going quickly to the bench to get fresh penalty killers on. With a five-goal lead, it's a good chance for them to use a few different guys who normally wouldn't play in those situations to see what they can do. Norris was left alone in the far corner. Stewart went one way, and uh, somehow Camazola went the other, and the Canadian came up with the puck. He couldn't believe his luck. Kirsch throws that from beside the net. Pavlou tries to get it back, and he does. Stewart taps it over into the circle. The shot doesn't come. And Canada with the man in the box for 43 seconds. Shoot it all the way down. Stewart is there. Lost in the skate. A chance. Joseph. Boy, some sloppy stuff from the Italians. They really haven't got their heads in this third period. Joseph, who has left there. And Rosati was saying, hey, what's going on out here, guys? Play a little hockey for me. Bit of a communication breakdown. Action coming quickly toward the Italian goal. Rosati, who's fresh off the bench, not quite with it yet. Fabian Joseph is one of the quicker players around as well. He almost made the Italians pay the price. That did get caught in Rosati's pad as he tried to pass it back, so i got to make a correction there. Rosati should be saying thank you for all the help I got. Pushed away by O'Quinn. Another penalty to be called. Brad Schlegel with an American football tackle on an Italian coming into the zone. Holding the call. Johansson not having to really look hard at it. Schlegel involved. He's got his man as he goes back. Harlock is the man that actually puts the final grab on the Italian with the puck. There were grabs going on all over. I anticipated that it was Schlegel. That's my apology. <laughs> Harlock is the guy who is sitting, I assure you of that. 2.31 the time of the penalty here in the third period. 6-1 to one the score. 
The Canadians now with two men in the box, and the Italians looking to prove improve on that 6-1 scoreline. Camazola right back on the blue, fades it in the corner. Camazola winds up, and Hirsch comes up with the save with Orlando knocking on the door. Italians with a two-man advantage, working it out high. Hurst doing a good go job of keeping the pads together. A couple of Italians waiting for rebounds. It isn't going to happen. Camazola letting that shot go from way back of the blue as we get set for this. Orlando moving in with Top Teague. Top Teague takes a smack from Astley that gets it back, and the Camazola sets it up again. The tip. Orlando almost put that into the net with 137 on the power play. A wink wide pass. Good stuff from the Italians. Right in. Orlando again. And how did he miss that one? The Canadians struggling out there with men in the penalty box. Now break down with Parks. Parks will hang on to that. Deliver it out into the circle. And the Italians quickly back onto the attack. Tapatigue works his way into the high slot area and is poke checked off the play. Wah tries to bring it back in and Warenka picks it up for Canada. Tapatigue goes after him and the Canadians throw the puck around. Lubson head manning it right up to the red line, eventually over the blue and down the ice. DeCorey, who hasn't seen a lot of action, taps it forward. DeCorey gets the back pass and Joseph almost picked that up and went forward. Eovio wants it, but has to slam on the brakes at the blue line as Tapatig, who's been out there for a long time, takes it in the corner. Tapatig's been out there about three minutes, Paul. He's going to need a change. He's trying to get to the bench now. Norris dropped it back to Joseph, and Joseph let it fly. Orenka kept it in, and the Canadians keep the puck in the Italian zone. The Canadians killing off these penalties. Joseph is the man to do it. He's got the legs, a good forechecker, good stick handler. Stewart head manning the puck and Eovio now tries to do it on his own. He runs into too many red shirts. DeCorey drops it back. Three seconds on the lone Canadian penalty and the Italians have nothing to show for it. They had a couple of opportunities on the five on three, but once the Canadians got one man back on the ice, Terrian that is, the Italians really didn't generate anything with Harlock in the box. Ramoser squeezed out of the play. Ramoser back in the corner now. Tries to throw it out, and he does. The Italians with an opportunity shoot, and they can't get it away. Taken out of the zone. Canada now breaking with one, two, three. Savage brings it over and makes the move just before the blue. Korea was with him, but just a stride offside. Savage pulled the puck back just one too many times. Paul Korea couldn't hold up. Offside being the call, both teams will sort the lines out and get fresh bodies onto the ice. Nedbed, Rarenka, Schreiber, Lusko, Contos, and Contos scoring for the Canadians. The Tony, the only Italian to get his name on the scoreboard. It really has been one-way traffic so far. Korea with a chance. A deflection almost went in on the far corner from grabbing and holding on the far corner of the post, and the referee let that go as the Italians bring it into the zone. Hurst has a chance to bang it off the boards and throw it around to the near side, but Oberau taps it right back into the corner. Mancy muscles with Schlegel. Mancy is in there. Korea trying to get out to the defenseman Oberau, and he ran right into Johansson, the referee. The tap in there to Brugnoli. Brugnoli gives it right back and Savage for Canada. 5.41 gone on the period and the Canadians looking to set it up, but that didn't work. Fizliuzzi, a rink-wide pass. The Canadians breaking that up and start it back quickly. Korea leaves it right out front. Gunning for Todd Gross, but that didn't work. And Oberau in the near corner on the left wing comes up quickly. Oberau fakes the shot, gets around the defenseman. Joseph was there, and that uh, whistles over to the far side. Picelli, or Zerillo, rather, taken out of the play. DeAngelis taps it forward. And the Canadians getting back in numbers. As Roth flips it into his own corner. 
A rink-wide pass, and the Canadians never really seem to be pressured in their own zone for long. Canada now back on the attack. Some good defensive moves by the Italians, but they really can't hang on to the puck for that long. Top of tee, got it over to Orlando. And that goes to a man without a stick. Well, you can talk us through that one. I'm just going to tell you quickly, that was a great play by Tercelli. He played that one like he belonged on AC Milan Football Club. The pass came to him. That's the last place he wanted it, near the front of his own goal. He did a good job of booting it out of the zone. Waugh in the corner. Waugh feeds it back in. They're looking for the 1-2-3, and that didn't work with Schreiber positioned out front. A chance now for Topatigue. Topatigue breaks right through. The tip is there, and Hurst goes down. And a lot of players in the crease, the goal in the back of the, the puck rather in the back of the net, but we had a couple of Italians in the crease with Hurst down. Not the prettiest goal we're going to see in this competition. Top of Teague, who plays the game like a kamikaze, he just kind of runs around. He has good offensive skills, but he's not shy about sticking his nose in. Takes a dive for the puck, decides to finish off Hirsch while he's at it. Gets up to his knees, sticks the shoulder in. Gates Orlando very calmly comes into the picture and directs a backhander into the open net. And the Italians have their second goal. Look at Top of T taking Hirsch with him. Bodies flying around. Good patience by Orlando. He puts the puck away. 7.13, the time of that goal. And the Italians close the gap just a little bit. Coming back on the attack, Hirsch comes out to slow this down for Astley. Astley trying to get it out of the corner, runs into a little opposition. That comes all the way out of the zone, and Stewart has to double back to give away there, but the Canadians, Nedved, can't make the most of it. The tip there from Dutoni ends off a Canadian stick, and Canada now with three at the blue line. Korea, his pass bounced kindly for the Canadians. Astley now, Astley going in, looking for somewhere to go. Korea was there, Nedved was there, Hontos was trying to move, and Astley has to go deep with the puck. Astley whistles that to the far side, Nedved breaks up the middle, and now gets the pass just over the blue line. Nedved, his pass, or was it a shot, ricocheted off, and Nedved behind the net. Looking for Contos, whistles that right at the goal. Medved again has Contos on the hash marks. Hash Contos fanned on the pass, but somehow Nedved got it. It went right to his stick, and the shot was grabbed at the last moment. The play broke down about 14 different times, it but at did. the end of it, the opportunistic Nedved does get a shot away. It tells you something about the guy. He collects it, walks around two or three bodies, Takes the shot. Rosati getting the glove out, finishing it off with a dramatical display. Flagging his arm down, letting everybody in the crowd know he does have the puck. A smile from Nedved. He realizes that he probably shouldn't have had that puck in the first place. Back to the blue, and the Canadians continue to skate around in the Italian zone. 6-2 to two to score here in the third period. Loose puck in the corner, and... Some excellent play from Canada as Oberell and co defend. Joseph went in close, and Rosati is playing some smart hockey out there. Fabian Joseph's the kind of guy you really do wish the puck would fall in the net for. He works so hard all the time, he really makes things happen on the ice. Harlock. Harley Harley was the call, and the pass didn't go where he wanted it to go. Hurst comes up with a save as. Mayer clears it out of the zone, and Hurst was quick to react there. Oberau with the red line pumps it right in, and Mayer is there, and the Canadians start back in a hurry. Savage, Savage on the wrong wing coming in, trying to get it around. Oberau ends up on the far corner, drops it back. Some good surfing from the Canadians. Boy, they have a lot of speed. Some hooking out there, no penalty on the play. Norris grabbed and hooked as the net is off its moorings. And eventually the call comes from the officials. Hooking is right, Paul. There's the call from Johansson. Bob Oberau, who has seen a lot of ice time in this game, he's played a good game defensively for the Italians. Goes to the penalty box, finding it just a little bit too much to handle. The likes of Norris and Savage running all around the rink. 
finally decided he'd seen enough, put the hook on Norris. The Italians will be shorthanded. The hair in that kid's armpits will have disappeared for about a month after that hook. It was in there so long. Overall sits for two. The funny thing is, Overall can't believe he got the penalty. Oh, that's no. what amazes me. Overall cursing at the official, but that's the kind of thing you do when you're out there. All the way back to the blue. And a chance for the Canadians to increase their lead. The shot comes in. Johnson getting a piece of it, but the Italians are there to bat it down and shoot it down the ice. Hirsch slows it down for Johnson. And Canada with the wave going all around the rink, bringing it up. Savage hitting the blue. Savage, good move. Right in, takes the shot. And some great individual performances from the Canadians. Astley gets it over. Astley, the return pass. A chance now, the shot. And that took a deflection. Landed nicely with Ross not really getting the steam on it. Rosati saw that all the way after the deflection and held on. Good work from the Canadians. They're moving the puck around nicely. Warner having a go. Savage out on the ice for quite a long time with a good individual effort. Came close. Rosati seeing red shirts coming at him from both sides, left and right. A real carnival atmosphere here in Yogi, the Olympic Hall. It's uh, capable of holding five and a half thousand people. The Canadians enjoying their hockey at this moment. They lead six to two, and they're playing some fine hockey out there. And they're getting set for this competition. The Italians just don't have the legs to stay with the young Canadians. I think that's fair to say. I know I'm a Canadian, but I'm trying to remain unbiased. Heck, there's almost as many Canadians on the Italian side, so there's nothing to be biased about. It's just that the ones on the Canadian team are a lot better. Well, the nice thing about international play is that a guy like Oberau can swear in English and Italian, and he elected to use the Italian while he was in the penalty box, so the English viewers don't really have a clue of what he was talking about. That was good. Korea. A burst of speed in the corner. Camazola stays with him. Korea hangs on to the puck. Drops that all the way back to the rule. Back to Korea. Korea likes to throw the puck around. If anything, possibly guilty of not taking as many shots as he should. Johnson takes the shot. Rosati. Korea goes in. And Korea circles into the corner. And drops it back. Some good stuff from Canada. Contos looking for Nedved. All the way back to the blue. Johnson. Nedved. Korea and Contos really throwing the puck around nice out there. Contos kicks it along the boards. That squirts out in front. And the Italians have a chance to break now with 20 seconds on the penalty. Orlando dumps it back. And Korea is there. Korea drops it back. Korea had a chance to shoot. shoot and Contos tried to feed it back to Nedved. And the Italians come up. Zerillo overskates it. Wearing it. Korea always looking for someone to pass to. Varenka. If you notice the way the guy plays, he's always open. He knows where to go. He knows when to be there. He can always come up with a puck. He's always available for a defenseman to feed the puck off to. That is an instinct that is just born into a guy. You can't teach things like that. But is he looking to pass all the time rather than shoot when he should possibly shoot? Well, he's very guilty of that. The comments have been made. Coaching staff, the coaching staff has even said that, that the guy's got vision that nobody else has, but there are times he could shoot the puck a little bit more. He's been successful at doing what he's doing, so who are we to try and change him? Iovio saw that squirt away back to the... Blue line, Iovio now with a second attempt gets it up. Iovio with a third attempt gets the puck and gets it up to Di Tony. Di Tony being hooked from behind as he races in there. The Canadians, Lushko. Lushko feeds it back and Canada coming out in numbers. A chance now for Parks. Parks to Joseph. Parks in front looking for the pass from Joseph. Joseph spins around looking for places to go. Lushko calling for it. That comes back to the blue line. Renka takes the shot. And number seven, Lushko was right there, and again he was there, and he just couldn't get a handle on it. That comes back to Joseph back at the blue line. Wawrinka couldn't slow that one down. The Canadians now going through a busy period. Parks in the corner. Joseph 
skating, throws it back to Parks. Parks trying to get away from his check. Some good movement along the far board for the Canadians. Out front is Lisko again. And Todd Lisko had a couple of bites of the cherry and Rosati went down to make the save. Tony goes in to muscle and the Italians come up with a puck. Defenseman Brad Waranka is having an outstanding game. Once again, he's involved in the offensive play and he lays the puck off so nicely. This guy is a good playmaker for a big guy that plays the defense. The pass intended to go down to the Italian blue line is knocked down and the Italians throw the puck around in their own zone with DeCorey passing it to the far side. The return pass to DeCorey as he starts it up. Long pass up the middle intended for Roland Ramasuk and uh, offside is the call, a two-line pass. policemen they're making these hockey players younger well there are a lot of players on the Canadian side that are trying to find homes for themselves as well through these Olympic games and the play that they're putting out is being noticed by people in the crowd guys like Mark Astley a Buffalo Sabres draft pick they're concerned about whether or not he's physical enough they know he has the skills to play in the NHL but concerned with his physical play they'll be watching him through the games to make a decision on him he's playing his hockey in Switzerland right now well, we have Phil Stewart picking himself up slowly. He'll enjoy that rest. A colorful character who's been around a long time, seen a lot of hockey. The Canadian-born Italian. Got a great sense of humor. What can you say? He's a Canadian farm boy who's done well for himself. Really All the way has. to Italy to play his pro hockey. He sees a lot of action, too. Face off deep in the Italian zone. 13.07 on the period. 6-2 the score as the Canadians go for number seven out there. Warner, Warner looking for the return pass. Savage missed that one at the top of the circle and the Italians breaking the three players and that's what they need to do. The shot right on the target. Ramester got a piece of that and it's tapped in by Orlando and the Canadians back on the defensive. Norris breaks, but that goes up on the left wing. Norris picks up the bouncing puck and goes down, and the whistle blows. And I was saying that the Italians need to break in twos or threes. There's no point in sending one man down, taking a long shot with no one in to follow in. Well, it's easier said than done. They've got to worry about their defensive play as well. The Canadians are coming at them so fast. The Canadians are staying wide. They're moving the puck well. I'm impressed with the play of some of the Canadian defensemen, the way that they're moving the puck around right now. I mentioned before, Waranka is really quick for a guy that's uh, his size, and he's pushing the puck around nicely. Pushing and shoving there as Terrian goes up against Fizliuzzi. And both teams prepared still at this stage to muscle in this one. Terrian passing to the center to Schreiber. Schreiber drops it off. A chance for number 12. Greg Johnson, but Rosati is there to make the save. Quick shake of the head from Greg Johnson. He'd like to have another chance at this one. Has time. Slams on the brakes. Takes a look. Still has time. Snaps a quick wrist shot. Good glove save by Rosati at the end of it. Morenka. Lubson rather, Lubson for Canada, feeds it up on the right side and Lubson picks it up and the Canadians now move up in numbers, one, two, three, four over the red line, Oberau will chase this one, Oberau is in there with Di Gaetano and that comes out nicely for the Italians, coming up is Fisliuzzi, Fisliuzzi tries to pop that through center and the Canadians breaking down the play in the neutral zone, some good stuff from Wa as he intercepted that, Oberau Back deep for the Italians. Oberau feeds it up onto the left wing. Fizliuzzi starts up through center. Fizliuzzi trying to do it all on his own. And uh, from time to time, they're breaking through the defensemen. The Canadians perhaps taking this one a, a little lightly defensively here in the third period. They know that the game is theirs. And that's number seven. Well, what did I say? They're taking it lightly and they score a goal. Smiling face from Peter Nedved once again. This line is dangerous. They work the puck around so nicely. The Italians with a good spell for themselves. Going forward, 
getting through the Canadian defense. The play breaks down. The Canadians turn it the other way. And surprise, there's the pass. Nedved involved in the play. Snaps it home. Paul Correa laying it off. Eyes in the back of his head. We keep saying that about the kid, but what a pass. Quick shot. Rosati beaten by Nedved. Five minutes and two seconds remaining on the game. Seven to two now the score. Well and truly in the bag for the Canadians. It's just how they can improve on it. Seems to be the big question. Coming up now, O'Connor. And Rosati goes down and makes the save. The action still going into Rosati's face. Delfino probably very happy to be sitting on the bench right now watching this rather than having to be facing it. He saw his share of it for 40 minutes. Another look at the play as it came over the blue line. The Italian defense a little guilty of backing off too far. Nedved, two goals and one assist in this game. He's off to a nice start for the Canadians. His dispute with the Vancouver Canucks has brought him here. He's got a nice sponsorship package that seems to pay for the drinks after the game. Well, that was to be in the works. He was working on a big sponsorship deal that would be worth probably over a couple hundred thousand U.S. dollars in dispute right now with Vancouver and there was rumor that he was going to be involved in a trade with Kovalev going to the Rangers but that fell through due to the money that Nedved wanted. Well Nedved thinks he's worth a lot and right now he is worth a lot to the Canadian Olympic team. The Canadians coming back on the attack and the Canadians whenever they hit that blue line they're hitting it with three four players they certainly aren't going up on a lone strike. Hirsch comes well out of his net to clear it away and the Italians have to go deep again. 7-2 the score line here as the clock kicks down and the Italians will, I'm sure, want to get this one over in a hurry. It's a bit of a nightmare for them. They knew it would be difficult, but uh, not that long ago they tied the Russian team in the opener 2-2. And so they are capable of playing some fine hockey, but they just ran out of steam in this one. The Canadians much too powerful. Top of team throws it up on the wing. Papatid looking for the return pass and Oquin backhands that off the boards and the Canadians going for the change as Oberau goes deep behind his own goal. Oberau, the captain, throws it up on the left wing and the Italians, Iovio, a shot, Hirsch lets that bounce out front and that could have been a problem. Oberau keeps it in nicely for the Italians, throws it in behind the goal. Astley couldn't prevent that from coming out front and the Canadians Gently tap it out of the zone. Rignoli drops it back to the far side. De Tony is poke checked at the last minute. Rosati gets a stick in there. And the Canadians now pick it up a pace. Warner going after his man. Oberau trying to bring it out on the right side as we approach the final three minutes of the game. Well... It certainly hasn't been a classic performance, but uh, when you have a strong team against a fairly average team, I guess it's fair to say it's, it's going to come up with a high scoreline. We have seen better games so far in this competition. The finished game was a good one. And although the Germans against the Austrians wasn't a classic, the, close, uh, the score was a close one. And earlier on today, the Slovaks and the Swedes fought it out for 60 minutes with a 4-4 score scoreline. So we have been treated to some excellent hockey. And I think along the way, you're going to see some big score lines like this one. Well, the Italians are capable of beating anybody on a given night. They didn't get the luck of the draw having to face the Canadians in their first game. That isn't a positive point. Maybe it is to get it out of the way and it'll wake them up for the rest of their games, much like the Norwegians having to face the Russians in their first game. Norway gave a valiant effort, but it just wasn't enough. A long shot from the blue line comes in and passes Rosati in the cage and the Canadians again. Johnson pumps it back into the circle with chances. The Canadians pile on the pressure. Schreiber took a swipe at back. It, it eluded him. Comes all the way back to the blue line. Schreiber moving quickly along the boards. And the Canadians keep it in the zone as the clock ticks down. Schreiber wants it. And the Canadians playing a little cat and mouse in the corner. Schreiber preventing that puck from coming out. 
with Kelly trying to work it. And now it's Pavlou's turn. Pavlou threw that across the rink and the Italians will get it into the Canadian zone as Terrian slams on the brakes as he approaches the boards. Offside the call as Pablo picked up the puck on the near side and uh, folks, the thoughts on the Canadians. We've seen the Czechs, we've seen the Slovaks, the Swedes, the Finns, the Germans and the Austrians. And uh, Canada must be there in the top three, four. I would think so. Through the Asbestia Cup and the Spangler, they played with various combinations. They've had a lot of games against the Americans in particular. They've, they've got a team together now that has got potential. If they can just gel, they've got legs. They can obviously play the body with anyone. Canadians could be in there, just like the Americans. They're outsiders for any of the medals. They've got to be in there. The Swedes and the Russians probably still the favorites. The big question is, we know that we have a lot more to see from the Swedes and the Finns and the Russians, but is this all we're going to see from the Canadians? Have they blown it in this one? Is this the best they can do? Oh, I, I don't think so by any means. I think that they haven't really found their stride even in this game. I think there's a lot more that we're going to see from the Canadians. We saw a great performance from Finland. They're a little bit of an outsider as well. They're capable of picking up a medal the way they're playing right now. Varenka let go a rocket of a shot as we approach the final minute. Nedved out there doing some great work with Turi again. Kontos for checking. Nedved now goes in after his man. No let up in the Canadian pressure with a few seconds left on the clock. O'Quamp pushes that over to the far side. That bounces into Italian territory. And Nedved pushing and shoving. His stick being held by Camazola. Kontos trying to get into position and trying to get the pass into Korea. That bounces nicely for the Italians. Coming down on Hirsch, the shot here. Another one, Fisliadi goes down and uh, Hirsch was sprawling on the far side of the net. Fisliuzzi did everything but put the puck in the net. He came in on the rebound but just couldn't find an opening. Italians with a good spell. Coming down on Hirsch, the first save was made. The puck's bouncing around. Contos is back there to try and help out defensively. It appeared as though the Italians were going to score, but it wasn't meant to be. Face off deep in Canadian territory. And 25 seconds now left on the clock. De Angelis. Gets the pass on the near side, and the Italians will take it in over the line. Hirsch drops that into the corner, and the Canadians have won their first game of the competition, and they did it in style. I think it's fair to say that they were happy to see the Italians out there, and as I said, not the Russians or the Czechs or the Swedes, what have you. So it was a good opener for the Canadians. The Italians will have to go back and... Perhaps look at another game plan. Rosati played well. I thought he played a lot better than Delfino did in the first couple of periods. A good victory for the Canadians. Nedved, Varenko, Schreiber, Lushko, Kontos, Kontos, and Nedved again scored the goals for Canada. De Tony leveled the score in the first period, but then it was all Canada. Orlando in the third period made it a little more respectable at 6-2, but the final score, 7-2. The Canadians win this one very, very easily indeed. Well, we got uh, Richard Beaupre now picking men of the match. Thank you very much, Paul. I'm going to drop you in it as many times as I can. Well, it was said before the game, we both agreed that defensively the Italians were going to be up against it. I'd have to say that Bob Oberall played a solid game defensively for the Italians. He was out there a lot. He's the captain on the team, and he knew he was up against it, but I thought he put in a good performance. For the Canadians, I'll have to go with the provider, Paul Correa. He just set up plays all night. He just kept working. He's a small guy. The answer has hit him well. Go ahead and do it if you can. This guy keeps his head up, and he's set up three lovely goals for the Canadians. I'll go with Paul Correa for my player of the game. Well, for me, I'll look at top of Teague for the Italians. I thought he hustled and he had a couple of excellent opportunities for the Canadians. Well, I don't know. Korea was obviously the one. Nedved and Contos picked up two goals each. I'll say uh, Nedved for me, the Czech who now holds a Canadian, played well. He did some good forechecking. Korea 
uh, as you say, is a great provider, and that's one to, one player to watch throughout this tournament and also in the NHL in the years to come. Yeah, big decision for the kid. Does he go back to the University of Maine and try and help him defend their national title, or does he go to the Anaheim, Anaheim Ducks? It's nice to be faced with that kind of decision. Later on this evening, USA against France, and that should be a good one. Similar styles of hockey there. The French with one or two veterans on the squad. The Americans coming over here with a fresh bunch of boys from college, one or two uh, hopefuls for the NHL. And the Americans look to be favorites just underneath the Russians and the Swedes from some uh, quarters. The American team put together by Tim Taylor has got a lot more goal scoring ability than the team that played in Albertville in 92. Offensively, they should have more spark. They're always going to be an exciting team because they come out all pumped up. I'm looking for them to put in a good performance. We know the French will be physical, but can they skate with the Americans for three periods? That's a big question. Can these teams that finish at the bottom end of the groups A and B, can they skate with the big boys when it really comes down to the middle part and the end of the third period? The answer is usually no. As we're looking at the highlights of this game, we just saw the Detoni goal for the Italians. That was a bright spark for them. And here we see the Renko goal changing directions and causing Delfino all sorts of problems. At the end of the first period, it was two to one. The Italians... Uh, shutting down the Canadians as far as goal scoring is concerned but then in the second period it all started to happen for Canada Canadians really started to find their stride they had the better of the play they were all over the Italians at both ends of the ice Schreiber came up with the third goal for Canada at the start of the second period that made it three to one 124 the time of the goal good patience exhibited right along the blue line by Astley very offensive defenseman, another good one to watch. Him and Waranka both having a good performance in this opening game for Canada. Rebound laying out there. Lushko right on top of it. Delfino without much of a chance. They scored six goals on Delfino before he was pulled in favor of Rosati, but uh, he really did see a lot of action out there. 26 shots in two periods, and he didn't have too many opportunities of stopping these shots. They came from all angles. Contos close in, uh, making it 5-1 to one for Canada. Nedved, Contos, and Korea, as we said, really did provide a lot of excitement as the three of them skate over the blue line for the fans here in the rink. Contos with the quick release. And that just trickles over the blue. So at the end of 40 minutes, Richard, it was in the bag for the Canadians, 6-1. to one. But then, top of Teague, my man of the match, came back and really did almost turn things on, uh, or turned Hirsch on his backside. And Orlando came up to make it 6-2. to two. But top of Teague has to be given credit for setting that one up. Without a doubt, top of Teague works at both ends of the ice. He's always taking the body on that particular play. He took goaltender Hirsch with him. Orlando came cruising into the play, saw what he wanted, waited, moved the puck to the outside, and dumped the backhander into the goal. That's the kind of player that Orlando is. He's, he jumps on the opportunities and scores a lot of goals. Korea set up Nedved for goal number seven for Canada, and that's the way it ended up. We're going to go right now, but uh, be sure to join us later on. We have USA against France. Until then, from Richard Beaupre and myself, Paul Ferguson, bye for now.